congratulate you. Congratulate you on this conference. Well, after having listening from all these these days about the theoretical framework of universal jurisdiction from Nuremberg to Pinochet case to the situation we are going through today in Guantanamo, Tibet, Palestine, specific cases that we have uh, heard about. And more specifically, also the cases that we have heard about Latin America, and we are, well, historically, we are brothers and sisters. Latin America nowadays has become a reference, has become a reference, in, reference in terms of universal jurisdiction and international justice. They have been a very good example as to how to resolve this problem. And now, from all that, now today we are reaching Spanish case. This is a panel specifically devoted to that. We had an approach uh, yesterday, but today we will be devoting this roundtable to it. Well, this conference has an objective, um, an ambitious objective, that is to say, to issue the Madrid Declaration, same as it happened in Princeton in 2001. So this tells us about the opportunity for that, and considering or, or in the context of the attack that has been perpetrated by the current government to universal jurisdiction. You know, we are. this is kind of like the date and the night. Spain, in terms of jurisdictional, universal jurisdiction, has a, has a return way. When two decades ago, when Falta Sargazón implemented universal jurisdiction and prosecuted the tyrants, and now that was the one way travel, but now there is a way back, a recent travel. So, so both the, these two ways are endangered in Spain. So therefore, it is now we have Maria Servini de Curia, is a judge from Argentina who is visiting Spain. She is the only person who is prosecuting the crimes that have been conducted under Franco's regime. This is her victim, her visit is very, very timely. She is giving to the Spanish justice what the Spanish justice is not giving to the victims. Once I interviewed her, and she told her, she told me that she, well, she didn't rule out coming and visiting Spain. And she fulfilled that. She kept her word. She said that by the time when the Spanish government was exerting lots of pressure on Argentina to prevent video conferencing from happening from happening. And at that time, they, well, they, the, the government didn't let 30 people, 30, oh no, well, 30 victims from Spain uh, were fled to Argentina to give their declaration, to give their testimony. So now she's here, she's visiting Spain, she kept her promise. She is in Seville. In the next few days, she will visit Malaga, and then she will travel around some regions in Spain, and she will take a statement. She will take a statement to victims. As far as I know, she will be visiting a mass grave in Seville tomorrow. There, there are 29 civil um, pe people who, who were shot at the civil war. It had to be her. She came from Argentina to give the protection uh, to the victims, she would listen to the victims. Well, the victims were listened when the Supreme Court dealt with the issue of uh, Baltasar Razón, which at the end, well, made him uh, and being removed from his office. No, it was not only because of that. And 
Well, now the current justice doesn't know, doesn't answer, is looking to the different direction, and is not taking into account its citizens. The Spanish justice had an opportunity, a golden opportunity, to take on his uh, historical opportunity when Baltasar Garzón, who was working at the Spanish High Court, ruled his did a ruling in October 2008 to prosecute the crimes under Franco's regime. Then that was stopped and that was made ineffective. And then the uh, Spanish government reinforced the amnesty law, which is just out of place. It, is, it was a clean state law, which is, I'm sure that it will be derogated as many other clean state laws, because tyrants cannot be uh, cannot be go, cannot go unpunished forever. Well, now we have a prosecution from Argentina, and now this has evidence that has put the Spanish government in evidence. But we are not talking about the universal jurisdiction that is carried out or implemented by the Argentina judge, but also the United Nations also sent out three experts. Three experts here to Spain is a specialized uh, working group, and they visited us, the supporter or the rapporteur from the United Nations, a rapporteur for the truth, came to Spain, visited Spain. They have recommended to derogate the amnesty law, to reactivate the law on historical memory. We should not forget that the one and only register that there is in Spain about these disappearances is the one that Garson did when he was working on the topic and when he was, and then at that time he registered 150,000 disappeared people. So Spain, after Cambodia, is the second country in the world with the highest number of people that were made to disappear. This is really shameful. Now to go back to the context of historical movement. Well, yesterday, long discussion was, uh, well, the key role played by the social movements was stressed in here. Well, well, here we have the, now we have the rebellion of the grandchildren. Here we have a generational conflict that started back in the year 2000, when the first grave was exhumed based on international criteria about approved uh, exhumation. The first one was in 2000, was opened in 2000 at the Bierzo area. Well, the rebellion of the grandchildren, it was a generational reaction in the need to know the truth, to hear and to learn about the truth. At a time where fear was no longer there, as it had been the case in 1981, where the military, the coup d'etat in Spain took place in Spain. That is no ball in Spain grew and grew. It has been pressurizing institution. And one of the results was the law on, uh, memory, on historical memory. It was good progress. However, in 2007, well, the maximum achievement or the greatest achievement for was the law on historical memory. However, now that law has been disactivated, has been made noid. I can remember what the rapporteur from the United Nations told me in an interview in an interview that I had with him. He told me that in Spain he had seen lots of pain. There are lots of open woods, wounds in Spain. And he also told me that there was a great distance. He could see a great distance between the awareness or sensibility of the government and the pain of the victim. And then he also, well, and I can say that many people share or believe that it is a rebound, it is a revenge, opening up wounds. And 
Yes, it is true. Many people, uh, also people in Spain, think about that. So when facing that situation, what are the alternatives that we have where we don't really need to have a democratic rescue from the outside? Well, we had people from the United Nations coming here. We have the Argentinian judge. And well, they are contributing to move forward, to proceed with this situation. And then, well, also, well, perhaps we can also hope that there will be a change in the next elections that will allow us to repeal the amnesty law, to create a commission for truth, and at the end of the day, to block and block the pending subject that it is still there, that the left party is trying to, or left movement is trying to reactivate, but it is not powerful enough to do that. And then, then we could also, well, in the future, perhaps the brainwash will no longer be there. Uh, so uh, let me finish. Well, Spanish case, the historical memory, it is the great background for universal jurisdiction, because at the end of the day, well, we are the recipients of universal jurisdiction, but we are facing a situation of lack of action, shameful lack of action on the part of the Spanish justice. If the Spanish state is organizing this shameful uh, show, making us look like a disgraceful monarchy, by not respecting the victims of the Franco's regime. Here we also have to mention the uh, last uh, cutouts of the universal jurisdiction because the government yielded to the pressures that received from other uh, governments uh, commercial and trading pressure. So therefore, we were really proud that in the past we were really brave. We really were uh, world examples for fighting against uh, these criminals. We used to be reference. We used to be a reference in Spain in terms of fighting the tyrants and fighting against impunity. And one of the judges from the National High Court says, nowadays we are releasing drug dealers. 43 people have been released from prison. This is even more shameful. And then also, I don't want to say anything if the, well, what would happen if the crime committed against my colleague Jose Coso would go unpunished? So, well, there was a rebellion of the grandchildren, but now there seems to be a rebellion of judges, judges that are against the new amendment of the law on universal justice. So to me, it is important as well as hopeful. So I don't really want to take longer because now I'd like to introduce the other panelists in this round table. So this was just an introduction. Now I'd like to thank the panelists for being here. And first, Flan Larue. He is the rapporteur of United Nations for the promotion protection of freedom of opinion and expression. He is from Guatemala. He worked as the Commissioner of Human Rights in Guatemala, was advisor for the High Commissioner Office for Human Rights of United Nations. He was the founder in 1990 of the Center for Legal Action for Human Rights. He became the most important NGO in Guatemala to prosecute cases of violation against human rights. He prosecuted the first cases of genocide, and recently, in November, he presented a report to the General Assembly of the United Nations about the rights of the victims. He will tell us about that. Later on, we will have Anna Mesuti. She is a lawyer of the legal team of the cause of uh, uh, victims under Franco's reign in Argentina. 
She is a specialist in philosophy of law at the University of Rome. She's got a PhD from the University of Salamanca. She was a civil servant of the United Nations in Vienna and Geneva. And now she is a guest speaker in several universities of the world. She will tell us about the specific case, the specific uh, the Spanish case specifically. And next we have uh, Gaspar Lamazares. He is a politician and a Spanish doctor. He is uh, he was a member of Parliament at, and he is the spokesperson of Izquierda Abierta Political Party. He's also the president of the Mixed Commission for the Study of Drug Dealing Issue. And last, we have Ramon Saez. He is a lawyer of the Criminal Division of the High National Court. He has written several articles on questions related to historical memory and universal jurisdiction, and he was the spokesperson of the High Council of the Judiciary Power from 1996 to 2001. So I'd like to give the floor, first of all,